before we get into what we're here for today, I've got to ask about your country. I've never met anyone from Myanmar, Burma before. So it, Burma is it's a, the size of Texas, um, located between Thailand and India. It was closed off for many years until recently, and it has gone through tremendous transition in, uh, since 2012. Very exciting changes that we've seen. What's been the impetus for that transition? Um, a lot of people speculate that um, that it was military's way of relinquishing some of the power and for um, for Aung San Suu Kyi to take a step in the right direction. So we've had had a election a year ago, and for the first time in the history, a Democratic Party is now at the helm running the country. It's wow, very that's, exciting times. I, yes, it's got to be exciting for you. Do you still have family that live there? Uh, I have some distant relatives that live there. So let's talk about the Global Washington Conference and what you're here for today. This, this entire conference is about people working together to make a better world. You've kind of been in that for most of your professional career, right? That's right. That's right. Yeah, it's been very exciting to be here because it's our conversations we just had is around people who are transitioning back and forth between the private sector and public sector, social, social justice work. Um, and that's kind of the role that I've played and other people in our panel discussion all have done that, just between the played a variety of roles and it's been very exciting to meet. Where, has, where do you think has been your biggest challenges in terms of being able to, to get this to people to work together? Let me just put it that way. Um, I think learning not to see the lines you know, is the most important thing. I think the conversation we just had in, in our, my panel, it's you can make a huge difference towards global development while working in the private sector as well. There's companies that I give a particular company of example of people who worked on the Android phone. They were working for Google, they were working for the corporate world, but that device itself and the smartphones in the hand of the rural population has had tremendous power and tremendous change potential for all of us as a species. We are so much more connected and have access to so much more information at our fingertips. So it's a hugely empowering device and that was done by the private sector. And I, another example I used was M-Pesa, um, the mobile financial services company out of Kenya and Tanzania. People who work for M-Pesa make tremendous amount of impact in the global development arena, getting access to finance for the rural women. Mm -hmm. They were not in the public sector. They were working out of the private sector. So for me, it's like not one over the other, but everyone working together with a common mission is what is really exciting. There are too many countries in the world right now that are in conflict. How can the approach that you're taking and that people are taking here at the conference, how can that they overcome that conflict? I think the conflict that I see from my perspective is too many people drawing the boundaries around themselves. This us versus them mentality, I think, is at the root cause of so many conflicts. I think in some ways it's still like the remnants of the tribalism that's still left over. I mean, I can say that about the issues that I've seen inside Burma as well. Um, so I think we all need to learn to think from like a bigger perspective of us as a global citizen, us as a global community, of everyone working together to make the world as one place. So I think once we get people to think beyond the, the country borders, or beyond the tribal borders, I think that's how we're, we're going to be able to look at things and solve the problems together. Mm -hmm. Um, you are an advisor to, you know, one of the world's foremost global development NGOs, you know, Amidia. What kind of things do you try to advise them on? What do you tell them to do? What do you say, you know, the next frontier for us to succeed is here? So the, the particular um, area that I have advised uh, Omidia Network in is around their work inside Myanmar in governance and citizenship engagement and financial inclusion. And financial inclusion in particular is something I'm very passionate about because when we have people in the rural area that have access to information, 
that have access to finance, then you really make sure that the, the digital divide doesn't happen between the urban areas and the rural areas. I mean, I grew up in the rural parts of Burma, and that's kind of the reason why I'm so passionate about advocating for the people in the rural area to have access to information and access to finance. So from my perspective, if rural population have access to finance, if they have access to markets, they can, and they can, they have access to information, they can choose to empower themselves and lift themselves out of poverty. They're not dependent on someone to come and empower them. They can choose um, to empower themselves. And in Burma, it's a very good news. We have, um, we were a few years ago, not too long ago, the country has, was the place of SIM cards that cost $1,500. And then now it's less than it's a dollar for a little over a dollar for a SIM card. Majority of the population have access to telecommunications coverage, and anyone who's buying a mobile phone in Burma, it's majority are getting on using the smartphones. So they already have access to connectivity, and all of a sudden it opens up the entire world wow. and possibilities. Can I ask you a personal question? Sure. I, I can I can see you being a little girl in a rural community. I don't necessarily can see you being a little girl in a rural community of Burma, which had, you know, it's it's huge issues, and getting out. How'd you get out to so, be the success that you are today? Yeah, it's a fate. I mean, I mean, chance, really. I had never intention to had ne no intention to leave Burma, but we were our family was caught up in a political uprising in the 1988s, and um, that caused my entire family to have to leave Burma. Uh, and we ended up in Thailand, and our next door neighbor in Thailand was this couple from Seattle, and who tutored me, and then mentored me, and they said, you gotta come to school in Seattle. So they sponsored me to come to school at University of Washington to study electrical engineering, and I ended up in the tech field, tech industry as a result. Wow, so I, I usually end up interviews with this question, you know, what are you gonna be doing? Doing in three to five years, but I think the world is right at your footsteps. It's been very exciting. I mean, I've been really excited to be able to figure out a way to enable mobile financial services for poor inside in my homeland, and which is my my contribution back to the the people in the rural part of Burma. Wow. And it's I could not have done it without the skills that I've gained in the private sector and working in the telecom industry, the confidence that I've built in um, working in the, in the new product development. In, in U.S. and I just feel like, oh, of course, if I can do that in the U.S. market, why can't I bring the same thing and introduce this new idea to my own homeland as well? Absolutely. So. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stan.